What's up guys? I'm hanging out at the shop today, so it's a little bit different video than you're used to seeing me in. Usually we're on the road and filming at houses and whatever. But I've had this idea, I've always wanted to try it, and I figured, you know, let's make a video, share it with everyone. If it works, maybe some people will benefit from it. What I'm going to try to do is modify my DeWalt miter saw to cut bigger crowns. DeWalt makes an attachment for their miter saws called crown stops. And I have them on both of my miter saws. They work really good for cutting crown. But the only problem is they max out at about six inches for crown. So if you've got a big seven and a quarter inch crown, you're not gonna be able to use those crown stops. You'll have to build a jig, which I do have a video of how I built a jig. I'll link that in the description below. So let's go ahead and give this a shot, modifying these DeWalt miter saw crown stops. So before I get started, I'll show you guys what these are if you don't already know. The crown stop is this little piece right here. It slides back and forth and you can tighten it and adjust it for different crowns. So I'll show you how that works with just a basic crown. So you'll pull that out. You'll take your crown, lay it in the saw in the fence and it'll be flat on both sides. You'll push this up and once it's flush right there, then you'll tighten it. And now you're set for the rest of the job. So it works great with this little four and a quarter inch crown. The only problem is, and the only reason I'm trying to modify it is because this crown right here, his daddy won't fit in here. So I'll show you the big one. So this is his daddy right here. This is just a, I call it his daddy because they're the same pro profile. It's just way bigger. So if I try to do that, it's just maxed out. It's, you can see right there, it's not sitting flush. It's kind of tweaked up, which isn't good at all. That'll just throw you off. It won't be installed correctly. And there's even bigger crowns. I'll, I'll grab a seven and a quarter and show you what that looks like. So here's a seven and a quarter, and that's just not gonna happen. See that, it doesn't even allow it. Right there, if I can focus that. That's not even allowing it. It's maxed out here, and that's not even allowing it to sit flush on the fence. And so my idea is, you see this is maxed out. It's not letting it go anymore for those bigger crowns. If I can just remove this, unscrew it, and make this hole, move it up to about the middle, that'll allow this to slide out all the way out there, and I can have that much bigger of a crown. So I don't know if this is gonna work. Worst comes to worst, I'll just have a hole right there. It's not really gonna hurt anything. But I got a kit where I can screw in and thread it, a tap set, so we're gonna give it a shot. So here's what I got. I got the DeWalt tap set. So I'm gonna try to, and then it says right there, tap and drill bit. So basically, I'm just gonna take this drill bit, drill it in to where I want the hole, and just take this, and then just twist this threader, and it should make the holes the exact same size, or it should make the threads the exact same size where I can thread this in. I don't wanna make just a hole in it, because I've tried that, and this is actually, this, this miter saw right here is kinda dusty. I've, I've retired this one. The one that you guys see in my videos is that one over there. And I did have a, if you look right there, I've got a screw on that one because I thought it would be more efficient to screw it in. But let's go over there and take a look at this real quick. So on this one, you can see it's the hole is in the same place. So I'm gonna try to modify this one too. But instead of having that twist on knob, I have this screw in there. And it's really not an efficient way. I thought it would be, but it's it's not inefficient, but it's just not any better. It's, it doesn't really do any good. So I don't really recommend that. So you can see the original hole right there. That's the hole that I want to replicate right here, somewhere in this area. So what I'm going to do since my smallest crowns project about two and a half inches. Just to be safe, I'm gonna do, measure about two and a quarter 
from the fence to the crown stop just so I have some room to play with so it's not exactly in that area. So I've got two and a quarter and what I'm going to do is just go right here to the tip and make a little sharpie line and that's where I want my new hole to be. So there's where I'm going to line the drill bit up right there. So I got my threader and the bit that comes in the kit. I'll just throw this on the drill, put it right on that dot and then start threading it with the T handle. Now I put my hand back up in here around where that black dot is that I made and there's nothing. I can't feel like I'm going to hit any part of the saw that other than this wall right here. So if you're going to try to do this, I would just make sure, like put your hand back there, look up under there, make sure you're not going to hit something or like drill through the saw. This bit's not long enough to drill out in front of the base over here. So I'm not worried about that. Now with any bit, it's going to be pretty important to have this thing go in as straight as possible and doing this freehanded without a drill press which is what I'm going to do because there's no way to put this on a drill press. It's going to be a little difficult, but we're going to see what we can do and make this happen. Now I'll probably need to get some lubricant on this first too before I get started. I'm actually going to spray the bit a little bit with some lubricant and actually a lot of bit <laughs> and just kind of dab some on that hole right there and we'll give it a shot. So that went through pretty easy. Really no big deal there. Just brush some of those metal shavings out of the way. And now it's time to thread it. I've got this. This is sold separately. I didn't get this in the kit, but this is the T handle where you can make sure you're straight when you're doing your threading. And this just unlocks and you can put the threader inside here. So I'll slide that in there. Tighten it up. That's in there nice and tight. I'm ready to give this a go. So basically the instructions say you want to start it, hold it straight as possible, and just give it a full rotation. That's probably a good rotation right there. And then just back it off to clean out that, those shavings. And give it another full rotation. And then back it off a little bit. This is kind of pulling out that, those metal shavings. Another full rotation. Back it off a little bit. This wall right here on the saw isn't really that thick. So this probably shouldn't take too long. So I give it another full rotation and then back it out again. Now I've, I'm all the way through, so this should have some good threading in it. So let's see if our actual, yeah, I can see the threads in there. They look pretty good. Now let me see if my actual DeWalt accessory will thread into that. Oh yeah. That's good. It's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to put the crown stop in there. And we'll do, let's see if we can get this thing really tight so we can hold it in position. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, I can't even move it. I'm trying to pull on it. So let me grab the camera and we'll get a bird's eye view of this thing. So that actually worked extremely well. Um, I can't believe I got it first try. And this, these threads are great. And you can just slide this. So that's the minimum I was talking about. That's about two and a quarter, two and a half inches. And then the maximum now is extreme, extremely bigger. Now I will say that once you get off the base of the saw, you can see this kind of falls down. But that's okay because to cut those bigger crowns, all you need is that little bit more. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll throw that that big six and a quarter, six and five sixteenths crown that I showed you in the beginning. I'll throw that in here and we'll see that it'll actually work now. So here's that big crown that wouldn't fit earlier. If you remember, I was maxed out. You can see the previous hole right here. So you can kind of imagine where it was maxed out. This is about right there. And that crown wouldn't go down all the way at the top here. So what I, with this adjustment, I can make sure it's flat on the back, flat on the top, and just tighten this down while holding it in place. And that ain't going nowhere. So, dude, the plan freaking worked. <laughs> I can't believe it, it's so cool. And even though that seven and a quarter is bigger, I'm gonna try it out. Try this on camera. So this one's huge and obviously this is gonna fall off, but I think if I tighten it, like bef if I just tighten this really tight before it falls, like you can see it's just falling off because it doesn't have the base of the saw to rest on like it does for those other crowns. But on this big crown, if I just tighten it and make sure that it's flat, I'll hold it there with my hand. Tightening this should keep it elevated even though it's not on the base of the saw. So right there, it's not on the base of the saw, but it's still, it's still cradling it. Oh man, this is a great day. If you wanna cut bigger crowns, do what I just did. It's totally working. So I'll show you what I mean up close. So I've got flat there. That's the top of the crown. Remember, crown's upside down. And then I've got flat here on the fence. So I'm flat on my fence, flat on my fence, flat on my base. And even though, look at this, I'll move this out of the way. The crown stop is not even on the base of the saw. And I'm trying to wiggle that, it's not even moving. It's still elevated because it's super, super tight. That, that knob right there, I just tightened it super tight and it's keeping it elevated. Heck yeah, just gotta do this side and we're gonna be good to go. John's gonna be happy too. This is gonna make it so much easier. Can you tell I'm excited? This is awesome. Sweet. So there you have it, man, it actually worked. I can't believe it. I've been thinking about that for so long and I've been putting it off, putting it off because I just doubted like, well, it's probably not gonna work. I probably won't even be able to thread it, blah, blah, blah. But I'm so glad I actually took the time to do this tonight. And I'm glad I filmed it because that's awesome. I know other people can use this method. I don't know why DeWalt did it like that. Maybe they just thought, you know, if the crown stops off the base of the saw, it's just gonna fall down. But you saw, I really tightened it up and it didn't fall. And who knows why they did it, I don't know. But anyways, the modification worked. I can cut big crowns now in the saw, as you can see, seven and a quarter inches upright in the cradled position. Super pumped on that. Super easy. You saw how easy it was too. It was like two minutes, two minutes of work. It's gonna take me more time to edit this video. But anyways, thanks for watching. 
I hope you learned something because I definitely did this time and I'll see you guys next time.